When it comes to making things work, we think of on or off. This on or off is our Boolean value 1 and 0, and these 1s and zeros are the fundamental language in making things work. These Boolean inputs become our language to power what we want, whether it comes to computing numbers, making a document, or simply saving a file. It would all have to start with basic logic gates. I'll try to explain this in a way that everyone could understand because this is like building blocks for kids. If I were to drop this and delete only one, does it drop through and reach the green? It does not. What about the other wall? I think that's also obvious that it does not. But when we delete both, then it finally reaches the green. This is sort of like a function for the AND gate. If input A is on but B is off, then the output would be off. If input B is on and input A is off, then the output would be off. Current would only flow through if only both of the inputs are on. Well, in this case, there is no current, but you get what I mean, right? Here is the more simpler form of logic. This is the NOT gate. This will remain on unless there is an input, and then it will turn off. Combining these two can give us a very important logic gate called the NAND gate. The NAND gate is just an inversion of what the AND gate is. It will only turn off if both inputs are on. So why have I started with those two and why is it so important? Well, using the NAND gates, you can arrange it in a way to make a certain function called the OR gate. What is an OR gate? If any input is on, then the output would be on. The NAND and an OR gate can also be used to make a function called the exclusive OR gate. The exclusive OR gate is where if one input is on, then the output would be on. But there cannot be two inputs or else the output would be off. Or more specifically, there cannot be an even amount of numbers on, only an odd amount of numbers on. These outputs are referred to as bits, and these bits make up a system called binary, as ones and zeros, or off and on. Before we go in depth, let's go and explain the numerical system of binary. Ignore everything in the background, this is just for explanation. In binary, there are usually just two digits, which is one and zero. When we're working with electronics, this is represented as high and low voltage. In the binary system, when we run out of space, we shift over to the left. Due to there only being two digits in binary, each place is worth two times more than the last. Well, how would we count this? Well, it's pretty easy. 16 plus 4 plus 2, and that gives us 22. With that information, let's go and make something that can add two binary numbers. What we have here is a set of two binary numbers. Imagine the black is a 0 and the white is a 1. When we add 1 together, we would have to carry the input and bring it over. Before I continue, I'd like to note that up here is the carry and the bottom. Below here is the sum. And we will need to know the sum of these two values plus the carry. 1 plus 1 in binary gives us 1 0. Plus the 1 gives us 1 1. So we put that there. 1 plus 1 up here equals 1 0. So I bring this up here and 1 plus 1 also equals 1 0, so I bring this up here, giving us the value 1 0 0 1 0. Let's go and break this down on a truth table that I made in Buildable for Treasure. If A is 1, then the sum is also 1. If B is 1, then the sum is also 1. But if both are on, then it goes to the carry. Let's take a look at this case that we had earlier. 1 plus 1 in binary equals 1 0, plus another one equals 1 1. But well, we would have to have a third input for that. And this would bring us to carry 1 and sum 1. So let's go and design this now. We want something that turns on if one input is pressed, but turns off if both are pressed. We can use the exclusive OR gate for that because it doesn't allow even amounts of ticks. Now we need something for the carry input if both inputs are on. And we can use the AND gate for that because the AND gate will only turn on if two inputs are on. Now, Let's make something for our carry input, or our third input. I'm going to plug this straight into the exclusive R gate because it only allows odd amounts of numbers and make a AND gate for the individual combination of those three numbers. And I'm going to connect them using an OR gate. To make sure this works, let's go and use a truth table to make sure the outputs match. If A is on, then the sum is 1. If B is on, then the sum is also 1. If A and B is on, then the carry is 1 and the sum is 0. But if all are on, then the carry is 1 and the sum is 1. Let's go and compress this down and begin making our byte adder. Ignore the logic on the left, that is just there so my life is a little bit easier when it comes to making inputs and outputs. 
Let's go and plug in our carry input into our carry input up here. Now let's plug in both of our first bits into the first bit adder. Now let's plug in our output to our output and also make sure our carry gets sent into the next carry input. Now that you know what's going on, let's go and plug in our carry outputs into our carry inputs, plug in our sum bits into our sum outputs, and then finish binding all our inputs. Now that we have this set up, let's go and check our equation that we had earlier and see if it's correct. So this is 1011 1, 1 plus 0111, and this should give us 10010. 0, 0, 1, 0. And it is correct. If you've watched my shorts or post, you would already understand how we would get negative numbers to make subtraction. But if not, then I'll still explain it because it's still something good to learn. The max value in a byte is 225. But when you add a signed negator, it becomes 127. And then after 127, it becomes negative 128. And it goes down from negative 128 down to negative 1 and back to 0. And to subtract, we would have to add the first number with the second negative number. Let's go start off with a byte input panel so that we can see what we're doing. Our first thought is to add in an exclusive R gate with a switch for our subtraction. But if you think about it, yes, all on is considered negative, but we don't want to start at negative 1, we want to start at 0. So what we do is bring our subtraction bit into our carry. Let's also add in some conditional values for our future use like LTZ equal to zero and GTZ. Let's also optimize this and make this look a little bit more thinner so that it doesn't take up so much space. Now let's go and test this. Let's try three plus four. That gives us seven and should also give us the sign that it's greater than zero. Now let's try three minus four. That should give us one and also show us that it's less than zero. Now three minus three should just show us that it's equal to zero. What we have made is the ALU, or more of just a two-mode ALU for subtraction and addition. Anyways, that is all. See y'all and bye.